music hot. Welcome back to the Cabin King Wadcast with Fraley. I am Cap. I'm Dallas. And I'm Fraley. So we are doing our recap of the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. We went over day one already. This is part two where we'll be going over day two. But before we go into that, we want to do another community shout out to um, a member of Reddit that I saw. Uh, her Reddit username is Holly Suarez one So from what I saw, the video that she had posted Whenever Holly had first started doing CrossFit, she had some, a few years ago, she had some issues with positional vertigo, so she would get <laughs> dizzy whenever uh, moving, and um, she posted this clip side by side of her doing burpees then versus her doing burpees now. Um, before we show you that clip, I will tell you what she posted in the comments as to how she kind of got, I'm not going to say completely got over vertigo, but how she's managed, uh, managed to manage it more in her daily life. So, quote, I worked on strengthening my core, also I went to physical therapy for my vertigo. I went to physical therapy for about six weeks and then continued on my own. I do remember posting a sticky note on the wall, a big letter A was on the sticky note. I had to stand maybe five feet or so away and look at the sticky note and move my head up and down, not taking my eyes off and then side to side. I used to get sick from it, but I got better. I remember I had to hold onto the counter and lift one leg up and move my head and that and Sorry, move my head up and down and side to side and do that with my eyes closed. During an actual episode, I have to hang my head off the bed and move it side to side slowly. What I do now is focus on a dot. Sometimes I'll put tape or some kind of object on the floor or even on the wall and focus on that object as I do the exercise. I did burpees slowly and rested in between each one. I was the same on box jumps, falling off of a 10-pound plate when I jumped. I'm comfortable with the 12-inch box only, baby steps. I think the strength and balance drills we do just help me overall, end quote. So really awesome to see. Again, we want to talk about people's personal growth in any aspect. So here's that clip of Holly. So like after watching that clip, like I really had no idea there was a way that you could control vertigo. I kind of thought that was a, like a, a, you got it and you deal with it. But that's really awesome to be able right. to see someone like have their own little techniques to get better at it. And then now her life has changed. Absolutely. Which is crazy. Like now like her regular stuff, I mean it's not vertigo-y. <laughs> I mean I, I, I hate to say that. I mean I'm not trying to make fun of it at all. But like I mean uh, like to, to be like that in some of the stuff where like oh no I can't. Uh, we've had an athlete before say that she can't spin around in an office chair right. without like passing out. So that's really cool. Like I love that 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 story Absolutely. is really awesome. Holly, good job to you. Thank you for letting us include that on this channel. Uh, anybody else have anything going on? Anything they've gotten better? And one thing I really wanted to really uh, emphasize is, if you're new, take a lot of videos. It's super cool seeing where you were once versus where you are now. When I started CrossFit, the gym that I was at, we didn't do a lot of photos. We didn't take a lot of videos. And I hate that. That was a few years ago, and I've come so far. Um, not great, but compared to what yeah, I was. But everyone's going to improve from their first day. I wish, I wish we had videos. I, I remember taking some videos, but we didn't save them. I didn't, I didn't hold the value that they're going to have right now. I wish that we could. I mean, not, not just like you said, like not that we're anything special, but I wish we could show some new athletes. Like, this is where, where we everyone yeah. is. Everyone can't do... The box jump as well as we can now. Everyone can't do an overhead squat. It took me two years to use more weight than Alexis on overhead squat. Right. Th so that, that's a lot right there. Like, yeah. You know, you know. So like, take those videos, send them into us. Like we'll we'll, we'll forever. Don't we'll take that them right here. Don't take that first right there. <laughs> so right here. <laughs> Don't yeah. take that first year for granted. Get videos, coaches, owners, take videos of your new people. Even if, if obviously, if they say they're uncomfortable with it, don't do it. Like, respect their privacy. Don't tell them you they're did gonna it. Don't tell them you did it. They'll like it later. But just, just get it. Like, it, it's really cool to see then versus now. All right, so let's get back into the games. Day Going two. into day two, our first event, which was event six overall, toes to bar and lunge. 
So for time, this was 30, 20, 10, mm -hmm. toes to bar, and then double kettlebell lunge for yards. The guys were holding two 70-pound kettlebells, or the ladies were holding two 53-pound kettlebells. What is your first impression looking at this workout? What do you think is the first thing that's going to go? Well, the, the first thing that's going to go, in, in my opinion, are just, you're, you're going speed toe to bar. I think right. that the stability, and especially with the, the grass, I don't know if you watched the, the intro to it, but um, Chandler Smith slipped and basically did the split. Like I know, I know, it looked like he almost got hurt. Um, but like, clearly that's a, that's a, those are paired movements for a reason mm -hmm. that holding these kettlebells like this, I mean, you, you can't, you can't let your, right. your, your arms come down and like your, your core is just rocked. So I really thought that the stabilization as you went through the lunges was going to be bad, but I was really excited. This is kind of a user friendly, uh, spectator friendly workout. Probably. Right. Absolutely. Like, cause you had, you had obvious lanes, you had movements. Everybody knows they look good. They're fun to do. And just seeing them, I love workouts where you see them move down the lanes as it goes. So you had the three rigs set up. It wasn't like they were lunging one way, then lunging back. Like you got to see them go down the length of this field. So you know who was where, who was in the lead. Yeah. And um, it was short, it was sweet, it was nice. It looked like it hurt. Uh, yeah. I think there was a tumble, I want to say it was Carrie or Haley. One of them fell over, I think it was Haley. But like she wasn't right on the camera. Like, you had to see like, it in the back. back. Oh. Yeah, you had to that. see it. You gotta look for it, but um, but I think this this might have been a little bit more of the case whenever Chelsea was asking about um, them knowing if they could take the trail around or go straight. Half the people were dropping their kettlebells way ahead, yes. right? And then later they were like, "Wait, I'll just put them right here. I don't want to go pick them up like that." And uh, I think that helped. It was Tia. Tia, because the, the girls went first on day. That two. was weird. How yeah, uh, but which, which which is okay, it's okay, yeah. but but then I, I kept getting confused. They were like, wait, did I miss the guys? Yeah. So, I mean, I thought whatever. the same thing because I turned it on at work and the girls were going. I was like, oh, I, did well, they wait. start early? I, yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, that was, a, that was a weird thing, but everyone caught on. So, I don't I really yeah. don't think they like. They didn't uh, last hurt long, anybody. But yeah. But everyone by like the second and third one, they were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that too. Um, yeah. But I did think that this was like the first case. Not that he was doing anything wrong or that he was doing it like maliciously, but I thought that Matt Frazier got a little bit of the benefit of the doubt on opening his hips on the lunges. A lot oh, of people yeah. were, were pausing at the very top, you know, going. Open hips, going. Yep. And he was, you know, like really missing it. And, and even the announcers were talking, they were like, I mean, I don't know, I think that's close. Like maybe, you know, so, um, but that kind of happens though. Right. Like being, being number one fittest, like, you know, that's tough. I've always thought that was tough as a judge. Like, if, am I going to tell Matt Fraser he doesn't know what he's doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't do anything. You're, you're doing great, dude. But it's awesome. Like, you're literally the first. I'm happy. First I, first place place I would never yeah, want to yeah. be a judge for that. Right? I didn't yeah. even want to judge Mark on our first, my first open. <laughs> yeah. He was like, "Hey, will you judge me?" And I was like, hmm. <laughs> "I don't want to do that." I was like, well, "I don't want to no rip you." And <laughs> literally, BJ had to come over and help me. <laughs> Alternatively, Mark is my favorite judge because one, he does the work for me. He tells me how fast I need to move. Yeah. Two. I don't want to disappoint that man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go faster. Even if you are, he'll let you know. Yeah, absolutely. Like, go faster, do better. Yeah, yeah. So that was a weird thing. Like, it, it happens as humans are, mm -hmm. are in there and everything. So, but he did do all the reps. Yeah, absolutely. Although, I mean, if you're not, if you're, if you're not, like, chancing it, you know, you, you don't want to go too slow. It's just, it's just one of those weird things that I saw it and was like, mm. Yeah. That's all right. That's right. That's no big deal. Right. I don't know that I would have noticed it had the announcer not said anything. Yeah, right. yeah. Like, I yeah. feel like it was that close. So they weren't trying to hide it by any means, which is yeah. good. Yeah, and he wasn't doing anything wrong. It's just <laughs> one of those things where you're like, probably one of those. But but the, the reason it was so important is because if one of those is called a no rev, Yes, go back. Yeah, and you're out. Like yeah. you're not you're not gonna recover from that because everybody is right there. With on a you. workout this short, you can't. Yeah. No exactly. reps. Yeah. You are a death sentence. So I think that's why it was such a like a uh, maybe they should have called one of those, or at least I mean surely they were warning them. But you just can't hear that sort of stuff whenever you're absolutely whenever you're a spectator, not right, right down on the. Um, I want to talk about a little bit of strategy that you had already kind of mentioned. We kind of moved on. Uh, the placement of the kettlebells and you finish your lunges. Mm -hmm. I, being the layman that I am. Um, when seeing somebody like Katrin put her kettlebells up to as far as she needed to, I thought that was going to be the smarter idea because whenever you come off that total bar, just run up those kettlebells and go. And when Tia placed hers basically right under her bar, I didn't think about the fact that Katrin is traveling further to place her kettlebells, turning around, traveling back to the rig, 
hitting her toes as a bar, coming back down, traveling back to the kettlebell. So she did add a couple steps. I didn't think about that till the workout was over, until Tia did beat yeah. her. And then more of the guys adopted that strategy. I think at least three of the guys took yeah. that same. Yeah, which so. I think is probably, now that you say that, it's probably why they switched guys first, girls first. Right. Because if guys always go second, they always get the benefit of the doubt seeing how they how they did it, and then the guys are going to, you know, quote-unquote perform better because they got some of those little tricks out of the way. So I think that was really awesome how they swapped yeah. guys, girls go first. Um, but that also speaks to, like, all the little stuff that really goes into CrossFit. Like, we have a lot of people going into, like, their first competition at KO this right. upcoming. Um, there's a lot of people who will be in worse shape than you, but they'll know what some of those doing. little tricks. Like, Hi. I'm stepping here, stepping there. Yeah, <laughs> hello, our name is Captain King. We're out of shape, but we can beat someone because we might not tell them a trick we know, hey. right? Um, maybe only one person. We'll probably lose to everyone. But um, uh, either way... Uh, you know, that, that, that little stuff, even though she's top five in the world, she made that small mistake or didn't think about it fast enough. Right. Maybe that's not a mistake. Maybe she just didn't think about it quick enough. Right. Tia did, and that's what kept her the few steps ahead the whole time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a fun event, and this is one of those that, like, I'm not going to say it seems simple, but it seems simple enough that we could do it. Like, mm-hmm. And it's, it's one of those, like, because you look at these workouts in the games, and you always assume, man, I wish I could do things like this. And then you see a workout like this, like, I could I do that. Go I'm, do I'm not going to hit any of these times by any means, mm-hmm. but I could do it. I yeah. could try it. Um, so this is a fun one I would love to test at some point during our new Cap and King competition Great. series. Which We're going to work out more. Woo! Fun. It's going to be a good time. Uh, we'll figure out what loser has to do later. Like, send them suggestions. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's go replace now on this first workout. So going ladies first. Uh, Tia Claire Toomey at 3 minutes and 33 seconds. Katrin, only 4 seconds behind her. So even with that extra step, not right still there. super close. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder what she could have done if she had done the same kettlebell strategy yeah. at 3 minutes 37 seconds. Brooke starting off a lot stronger than day one. Got the third place finish at 3 minutes and 51 seconds. Carrie, 4 minutes and 13 seconds. Haley, 4.21, which we kind of knew this kettlebell weight was going to be a little heavier for her. Like I said, I think she, I think she fell. Yeah. Not even like a little. Like, I think she tumbled over the side. Yeah. Um, then going to the guys, Matt Fraser at three minutes and four seconds. Noah Olson at three eleven. Justin Medeiros three eighteen, starting off strong. Samuel Quant three thirty nine. Jeffrey Adler at four oh three. I just want to talk about going back over the scores for the first day. Really pay attention to Samuel Quant's scores because his best place finish was a second place on event two. Then he had one. One third place finish, and the other finishes are fourth and fifth. That just goes to show how this point spread was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, it really was. There's a lot of movement from second to fourth. Right. Second to fourth, not first. Blah blah blah. They won. Yeah. They're awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. And isn't it, isn't it, it, it sucks so bad whenever you're bored with how great someone is. You know, like because you we <clears throat> talked about it a little bit last time. You mm-hmm. love seeing it because it's history happening. Yeah. But we are waiting for that next. That race, that's mm-hmm. who's going to be first. Like, we can have the race on who's going to be second, but it's just not as sweet. Not nearly as fun. But, I mean, that's, that's us as a society. We like to see someone fall mm-hmm. and see someone else advance. But, you know, seeing someone stay on top, like, that's far more impressive. Right. Than It's than, a lot know, harder to do. Yeah, yeah. Defending it once, defending it twice, now five, five times, now times. four times. Right? TS4? TS4, yeah. TS4, yeah. 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 that's fine. It's Which, killer. Like, that's they don't make it look like it's hard to do. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So much stuff. Well, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Get the but um, next, next event. Uh, a fun one, seven. right? Yeah. Snatch Speed Triple. This is the one we miss the crowd in. This yeah. Is the crowd oh, man. Cheering this is where you see Matt pumping them yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Right hitting that chest. Yeah. He knew, he knew he didn't yeah. have to this time because they weren't there. So each step of lift really fast. <laughs> but we can talk about it real quick. Yeah. At the beginning of this, the announcers talked about this. Jeffrey Adler called this event out, and I love yes. it. It's my favorite thing in the world. The, uh, he the said, I'm confidence gonna, in this man. Yes, I am going to look at Matt and then lift the last bar and then win the event. I wish that would have happened. happened. I, I wish, wish it would have happened. You know, I know. Babe Ruth calling a shot. I know. But then <gasps> but then the pitcher was like, all right, let's see how it goes. And then right. he was from him. Matt looked at him as yep. he was lifting the last bar. He took bar, his sweet moment. And then walked to the, the finish line. I loved it so oh, much. Man. Now, just to be clear, I love that he took the leap and like called his shot. Yeah. Because, I mean, he's a big dude. I mean, he, he's ripping it all, like, the, the big weights. And, like, he clearly could get that weight and everything. 
But I think it shows up, and Matt's been there seven times in a row. Yeah. Right? He knows this this lift. He knows, and I mean, he was a lifter before, too. Yeah, that's where I mean, he came from. He's been on the stage, and he stayed calm. He didn't say much, but I love that it was opposite. He's yeah. Like, I'm going to look at you, lift this last bar, and then watch to the finish line. And Matt was like, and even though it, Matt is out. like beating everybody by twice their points, that is how you still have a good race with a champion. You get people excited like that. When I heard yeah. him say that, oh, I was salivating. I, know. Yes, I was yes. ready to watch Super it. Super excited. So, yeah, the snatch speed triple, plus just my favorite lift. I love watching people snatch. It's mm-hmm. so fun. Um, a three-round elimination style. Uh, and the, fir- the three barbells set up in front of you, you had... Three minute cap, two lift, all three. Mm-hmm. But we saw most of these go in less than a minute. So for ladies, the first weight was 145. It would go up by fives. And 150, 155. That was round one. For the guys, 225, 235, 245. And then it's so on and so forth. You add 10, you add uh, to guys, add five for girls. So in round two, ladies, 160, 165, 170. Guys, 245, 255, 265. And then ladies, again, 175, 180, 185. For the gentlemen, 265, 275. 285 speed snatching a 285 pound snatch if i ever snatch 285 pounds in my life Mm -hmm. i will be a happy man i know and see i think this is one of the other areas where we get disconnect um like i say you and i we can touch 225 yeah on our best day yeah and you can say i can probably snatch 225 right hey not only is that the first weight of nine 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 total lifts it's also after six events (laughs) right where they didn't have a break they didn't have a rest day they didn't get to chalk up extra they didn't get to you know do all this extra stuff these guys that 225 was the barrier entry yeah into this, this event, first you know? thing I had to do. and so this is this is another cool one. We're like, like you'll probably get someone like, mm, I can snatch two fifty five, whatever. And I did make a Zach voice just then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but after all those events, you know, this is this, that's the cool part, man. Like they're they're, they're trash. I mean, not as trash as they're going to be for day three, right? But they're doing all this, and um, and man, they just look beautiful, Matt. It's such good lifts. You know, they were perfect. He didn't miss anything. I mean, I think he did miss a lift at the end. Did Matt? I, I can't remember. I think he missed the, the very last snatch and then got it again because I think there was a little bit of a, like, maybe maybe Adler might do it. I may be completely wrong, but either way, the miss was perfect. Yeah. You know, it was just yeah. one little second that he, he couldn't quite fight for it, but that's what is cool, the consistency. You see the people who win this are the ones that, that snatched 225 right. exactly like they snatched 285. And, um, I mean, that's consistent on the guys and the girls' side. My favorite thing is watching where the where they catch differently, like where it goes from power to squatting really quick, mm-hmm. uh, just seeing those lower catches. But, man, these, these lifting ladders, they're so fun. Mm-hmm. Like, I love them. Like, uh, I've done them once in a competition. I've seen them at the games a couple times now, and they're just always fun to watch, just running through the bars or just seeing that lane of bars in front of you. I mm-hmm. think it's awesome. It's really cool. I think because you can place yourself in there and your heart starts beating because, you know, it's like if you were looking at that, that line of barbells, and then now we have to really pretend – about a stadium of people right. cheering you on, man, that's gonna be so exciting because you know you can probably touch some of those 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 uh, snatch weights. You're not really sure about that last one, but I mean, you are. You do have the adrenaline racing and, and all that, and like I just, it, I'm with you. Like, right. It's one of my favorite events. At least in this one, they had music uh, the entire day one. Oh, there was no music. But, uh, we didn't talk about. That. I almost wonder if it was if it was those crossfitters at the end, like we got you. We know you want <laughs> to play some play it. Play it. Yes. Now. Um, yes. So I don't know how that how that came about, but yeah, know. finally music. That, yeah, that was silly. Man, it just makes me. Man, our members are gonna hate me for saying this, but one week I just want to do no week. No music. I kind of liked Listen. it without the music. I like, hate it. Hear but what they were saying. I've done, well, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that was that's cool. the better the better half there. And then I think um, it was probably like um, they could they could put it as like a liability like listen if music was playing you couldn't hear me right i don't want you to say that you know that sort of thing i'm sure casher probably put something like that on there. <laughs> but um but yeah no i would be game for I, i've worked out with, with no music i mean it, it's great it's not it's, easy it's, it's awful because you get to hear how out of you immediately know how out of shape yeah. you yeah. are like you, you're like you wow i'm breathing this hard so heavy much so early i'm loading the barbell like, what are we doing? <laughs> um but either way uh matt takes that one home yep glances over and then uh, did, did Sam end up finishing? Fe- Sam finished second. He and Jeffrey were both battling with a couple no reps at the end. Yeah. I remember that one for sure. Mm-hmm. I 
don't remember which one of them got to that. Uh, no, I do know. Jeffrey Adler got to that bar, that third barbell first in the last round at 285. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam, I think, had an A no rep, maybe two at 275. Um, but he fought for that, too. Whoever was third... Samuel Quant was third at 2.55. Oh, yeah. or not, that's not a wait. Two minutes and 55 seconds. Yeah. Quant was third, not second. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because because Adler got it, and Quant was only going to finish third. That's what but it then was. Then he sat and waited, and he stuck it, too. Yeah. And he wasn't like it. And when he got it, he got it. But um, that was cool. That was, one of the, that was another one of those Spirit of the Games types. Moments yeah. Moments where you're like, I'm going. Like, I mean, I think that Noah kind of walked off the... Noah off was the it. only one who... Knew right, that he was going to be way. eliminated. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, that, that's the conversation I did want to have. Like, do you choose, why do I need this lift? I have my points. points. Mm-hmm. I might as well start recovering and getting my head right for the next event. Yeah. Or, because all the because the women went first, and anytime anybody was about to be eliminated, they still did their lift. Yeah. So is it, I, I don't want to say necessarily good sportsmanship, be, other than just smart, smart sportsmanship. I, th- I think... I think that giving up on the lift and starting to recover is the smarter option, but no one has ever said that us CrossFitters are smart in that um, our ego is going to come through. And right. I think it's more like, um, I'm here, I'm top five, I'm going to finish what I started, I'm going to do this, because you could tell in Sam Kwan's eyes that he knew he could get 285. Right. And he was like, when he missed it, he was like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And I think it's more of, uh, of practicing finishing what you what you start, and that's probably super uh, consistent through all these athletes. Where on on a day, on a on a regular Tuesday in June, nobody's around. Samuel Quant finishes this national right? Athlete, you know, and I think that's just I'm gonna finish. I finish. I would finish it there. That's why I made it here. I I'm gonna to finish it, it here. here that's thing, a good point. Which is kind of a cool thing. I mean, I loved it. I mean, he he got it and kind of you know had that little grin and walk through. Like, man, I could have freaking ha- right. I could have gotten Jeffrey Adler. Right. But um. But I think it says a lot that they sacrifice that extra effort, even though it's only two or three lifts. Right. It's not tons of effort. But I think it says a lot that they sacrifice it. And they're like, no, I'm I'm doing this in front of the in front of the whole world. I'm doing it right now. Doesn't matter. I'm not worried about the next one. I'm worried about this, and that's what makes CrossFit great. Absolutely. I really think so. Yeah, absolutely. I don't I I, I don't hold it against somebody like Noah at all for not doing it. But you wonder it, you know? Yeah. But 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 Noah but Noah was a little bit different in that like he wasn't close. He wasn't gonna get it. Right. You know, that that I think he went on the two fifty five Right, he, right. He was he was on the he was on the two sixty five bar, right? And, he, and that's what he, he chose close, not to do, you know? right? And and he had missed it twice already, and he's like, mm, he and I think that kind of goes back to something you said on the part one video. Mentally, I think he was getting pretty exhausted through this whole weekend. Mm-hmm. Like he was getting, I don't necessarily know if frustrated is the right word, but tired. I think frustrated is a great word. I okay. mean, because you know he he's a he he trained clearly top two in the world, yeah, top three in the world last last couple years. And then he comes here, and he, the first few don't go his way. Mm-hmm. And then I'm fairly certain that 265 is routine for him. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you see um, him training on Instagram all the time. He trains big weights. Yeah, 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 yeah. As far as dropping under and landing in that full locked out, uh, just bottom position, his is great. And so I really just think you're right. I mean, I think it's frustration. Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Like, I've got. Let me get my mind right because he does. He ends up doing pretty well on you know, on some other uh, workouts coming coming up. But you know, it's just a struggle. So I'm not, so, I mean, <laughs> some athletes. I feel like such a hypocrite when I say some athletes are struggling. You know, <laughs> and you know we're sitting here and, and not working out like they did. You know, yeah. but um, I can't so award my Dundee. So yeah, see, look at this right there. <laughs> Shout out. Um, but either way, now we move on to the women. I have a question before we move on. Yeah. Yes. Y'all know more about some of these athletes than I do. Um, were y'all surprised that? Justin Medeiros was out in the first one? I, I think he, we talked a little bit about mass last week. Right. And he is not a thick guy. Yeah. You know, if we're, if we're talking like chest to back, you know, he doesn't have that. I mean, he's 21. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with, with Haley. You can kind of glance. I'm sure he's ripped up. I'm sure he's got, like, you know, he's built well and he finished third. You know, so, like, we're not saying anything about him. But in a brute strength event, whenever you glance at those athletes, you can say, Technique's only going to get you so far if you don't actually have the strength to go around, go with it. And so if, if a girl like Haley, a guy like a guy like you, a girl like me, <laughs> uh, are out there and they haven't had the opportunity to spend years underneath the barbell. He's only 21. Even if he's been doing it four or five years, Matt's been doing it 
15. Yeah. Right? You know? And so um, I don't think I was surprised to answer your question that, that he was out in the first little bit, but he was real close to not being. You know, he was he missed him and Noah. They were close. They were tight. Missed at the same race. time, and then Noah hit it again. So he was he was fairly close to making that second round. And then I feel like nobody would give him a chance after that because then you're right. with the big boys with the big weight. Yeah. Um, so, but, yeah, like if you were to come up to me like, hey, are you surprised Justin Medeiros got eliminated on something like this so quick? Yes. If you you surprised that Justin Medeiros got eliminated so quick against these guys? Okay, no. No, yeah. Like, it, it makes sense. Like, he's mm-hmm. going to play his game, and he's going to know he's going to pick up points somewhere else on the weekend. Yeah. Might as well get out of there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, because that's, that's, that's the name of the game. I mean, we have 15, 15 total events the whole weekend? 12. 12. Sorry. Way off. <laughs> okay? Um, either way, like, you know that some of them you're going to do poorly in, some of them you're going to do well in, mm-hmm. the ones you're going to do poorly in, sure, you're going to give the effort, but you're like, okay, got that, I knew it was going to happen, now I got to move on, as far as mentally, you know, right. going, so I, I you gotta like, know where like your are going to do, same thing how Haley did in the CrossFit total, yeah, she knew she was going to uh, press, uh, you know, strict press, more not than, not getting last was probably better than she thought, wait, yeah, absolutely, that sounds mean. It's not meant to me. No, 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 no. It's, it's not. I mean, because she is. I mean, if you look at that group of girls, she's like, in the strength, I'm probably going to finish last. Right. And that's okay. Absolutely. That's okay. I mean, knowing your weaknesses is part of being a good athlete. And then she'll be able to go work on them, clearly. Yeah. You know, Rich is, Rich is probably here to get her. Oh, man. Um, working out. Oh, from... Man, I hope not. She deserved a week. Eating them bison, bison sticks. <laughs> I don't like plastic sticks. I gotta be honest. I'm not, not sponsored, not being paid, but we could be sponsored. Froning Farms could be right here. Right here. Look at this. I think I need stickers for my laptop too. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Send stickers if you got them. And sponsorship money. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to take it first. <laughs> yeah. uh, not really much of a much surprise. of a surprise there. Well, anything lifting if she ever comes second place. I don't know what. Yeah, right. I'd be surprised. I'd be very forget, surprised. And a lot of people, if they're new to CrossFit, don't remember that they, she was an Olympian. And she famously, was training for the Olympic, for the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. At, she went cro- won CrossFit Games, and then a month later, or vice versa. I think it was Olympics. CrossFit. Olympics first. She went to the Olympics and then went CrossFit Games. Insane. Right. That's stupid. And then there was a lot of people saying, "Oh, there should be a full-time weightlifter representing Australia in the Olympics." And then, like, famously, Castro was like, "Beat her." <laughs> and you can be like what right. are you doing like this this is a superhuman that did what she should do yeah and so not a surprise that she mm-hmm. gets no. first in the uh, snatch ladder and then brooke with second she looking needed good. like going third second day two is looking a doing lot what better she needs to do yeah absolutely yeah. and again she is one of these stronger female athletes on the field uh comparatively to some of them out there so where we say you know you're going to get points somewhere else in the weekend, you need to know when you are going to get your points. Like, this was a workout. Take them when exactly. You that, attack that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, catch in third makes sense. Which is pretty impressive, though. I mean, even even with her back. I mean, I know with we're the, not dealing yeah. with deadlift weights, but I mean, that's that's, a, that's a lot going on. You're catching on that uh, in that yeah, squat, which yeah. is going to pull on that bag. So very impressive there. Which knowing about that back injury, she was just impressive all weekend long. Here we are. Um, Carrie fourth. Haley fifth. Again, not a surprise. Not Just surprising. like Madero's. Um, I, I think you could even put Haley in a wider spectrum of athletes here. I could usually say, I can see her being eliminated first. Like She's she's not at the age she needs to be to have that strength yet, mm-hmm. but boy is it coming. Yeah, it's on the way. Yeah. yeah, And especially you see her at the end of the games, Like they're they're not going to not attack this. You know? oh, I, she, she's, she's, I mean, I know we kind of joked about it a second ago, but she's probably already waking up. Like yeah. she's got like a picture of Tia that she crumples off the mirror. <laughs> yep. Anyone that's like Rocky Four. Yep. No, no, no. I, oh. I didn't know what the I didn't know no. to catch that, but I thought it was funny. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious and it's Do true. Do you want to hold some right. of that for the podium talk? Because boy, uh, I'm excited to talk about that. Let's go. So um, after the snatch, we go into bed eight. The bike repeater, which I really liked. I, I really liked that one too. It was, too. A, it was really cool. Yeah. Aside from what we talked about, where they that like the, the where they were. Like on the uh, yeah on yeah the, was, yeah. was a little bit off because we were like wait Brooke's not six behind or whatever like right. what are we doing yeah. um, but I thought it was cool I thought it was cool like where they dropped the bikes off yep and then, uh, like how they turned cool around the turn pillars. yeah they they handled those sharp turns smoothly because that's mm-hmm. that's something I wouldn't think that they would be including in their training but it looks like they did or they figured it out really fast well and we can say this too like and when you watch like the buttery bros videos leading up. Almost all of them rode mountain bikes. Almost yeah. all of them ran with a 
corn sack type thing. <laughs> it's almost like they knew. They know the word genre. genre. They know the word well, I know, but weird it's thing. It's like yeah. Ever since Cyclocross came in in 2018, 2017. Was that the right date? Put it here. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I know. I we just we were watching those episodes and I'm like, man, they are like oddly right. all training the exact same thing. But it was really cool um, to see that. I mean, like that, that that's like. And normally when you put a bike in, it's going to be a long time, but it was like a sprint. Yeah. And you can see, I mean, it was cool. When it all wasn't a bike race. It was a, kind of it see. was a workout. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to point out, like, is, is has has nobody come up with a cooler helmet for them to wear? Like, no. like it makes, it makes, it makes, like, awesome athletes look nerdy just. I completely missed that they were riding bikes at one point, and I see, I, like, I think <laughs> I came into it at a, while they were doing the rope climbs. I was like, why is she wearing a helmet? Are you wearing a helmet? That rope being climb? said, kids, wear your helmets. Wear your helmets. I mean, yeah, you You're should. not a nerd. 100%. <laughs> Nothing like that. But, but, um, uh, the, the, the girls went first on this one, right? Correct. Right. And real quick, just saying what the workout is. 10 rounds, 440 meter bike sprint, 221 way, turn around, come back, one legless rope climb. Continue. Um, so you see, like, Catherine takes off, and like it's like she has something to yeah. prove, right? Yeah. And then, um, and then the, the uh, technique differences come into play on that rope. She is, and she's a, a kipper. Which I, I am too. I feel unsafe on legless rope climbs. Right. I like to hold on to both. Big kip, like a like a pop like your hips. Yeah, right. Correct. Yeah. And then go. And so um, it is good for longevity, but I don't think that ten rope climbs falls under longevity. Right. You know. So I think she right. hurt herself there. Um, and I thought that she wasn't utilizing her full kip. But then you see Tia is almost like she like drops her bike, steps on the bike, jumps to the rope. Yep. Three. You know, and, and it's like just magical, and, and she just she took over literally on round two well, and never looked back. One thing that also I want to point out, what T was super smart about, as soon as she was past the pylon that her bike has to be, that bike was on the ground. She turned it. She was ready to get yes. back to that rope. But similar to like the kettlebells, it's the, that gray. Katrin the pulled the bike in closer, but also Katrin didn't run with that bike at all. Being a cyclocross. I think technically they had the option. They could have put the bike on their shoulders and just ran if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. You could see some of them get off the bike at the turnaround point, hold it. There wasn't a rule you had to be on the bike. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, no, but you're right because they were able to get off the bike. And exactly. Then if, if the uh, chain came off, they had to jog it down to the other side, which I was were really they happy they didn't have yeah. to do. That would have been awful. Yeah. So uh, Katrin, she would sit on the bike and then start pedaling. Everybody else would run with the bike, hop on, and go. And I don't know if that was like a, a thing about being uh, being scared of not being coordinated enough, yeah. or if it was just again not thought about in the moment. But that's definitely where she got hurt because, as you point out, she came out pretty good. She came fourth overall in this event, though. I know. Well, I think that she she really thought that she was stronger on the bike than she was. Maybe. Um, and this was well, a side Sorry, part, sorry. Yeah. More, she was stronger on the bike than she was, and stronger on the bike than she thought she could make up. Um, that she turns out she can make up because you would see her catching up as yeah. you went down there. Yeah. She would turn about the same, and then she would have caught up all the way there. But then the rope climb was so much faster from the other couple of athletes that she would just perpetually be gutting herself out on the bike, and then then her slow kips, which I also thought were kind of short kips. Right. She didn't really utilize it, which means she wasn't getting like she her her feet were only coming right below her hips, not fully below her hips. Right. So she couldn't pull high enough she to wasn't really pulling gain super that, high. Right? She kept her arms tight to her chest. She was blowing her arms out. And instead of as you can see, more Tia, more Haley, she had they had their arms yeah. longer. They were getting bigger pulls out yeah. of it. Which they're more comfortable too. You know, they're, they're doing just a hand over hand. Right. If you're gonna do the kipping, you got to utilize those big giant yes. kips. And I really think she was missing that. Um. So that's unfortunately why she ended up finishing fourth. But. Um, I thought it was really cool. I mean, uh, uh, unfortunately, we didn't really pay attention to Carrie and uh, Haley because we kind of knew that Brooke was in last. Right. Um, probably in about right, round five, we're like, okay, she's yeah. falling off a little bit. And then I think there was a better race going on between second and fourth. Yeah. That we didn't get to pay attention to because Tia was stealing the show right. again. Just like, I got this. This is how That's it should be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when she wins, she doesn't win by a little bit. Mm -hmm. She wins by a lot. I'm talking yeah. about winning by a little bit. This race that nobody knew we were in between Matt and Jeffrey, because most of these ten rounds, it was Matt with Justin a little bit behind him, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna say like Justin was on his heels by any means. Like there was a good little gap there, but, but he you was didn't the guy. exactly. He was the guy who was like, okay, this looks like it's gonna be Matt's first, Justin's second, and then in round eight, 
you see Jeffrey Adler all of a sudden creeping up on Justin Medeiros and he's like, what is this guy doing? Mm -hmm. He's making a move here. But he went then, classic Fast and the Furious where he's like, too soon, Junior. <laughs> I I almost had you. You never had you me. Never had you never had me. You never had me. Right? And, but then... But, you Sorry. See him, well, you see him charging in, 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 round, in round, round nine. nine. Yeah. That's round where nine. he messed up because they came off that rope climb at the same time mm -hmm. uh, after round nine. If Adler could have stayed under him till round ten and then made his push, because I think one of the commentators made a pretty interesting comment that I didn't think about. I don't know if Matt even knew they were in the same round until he saw <laughs> Jeffrey pushing that much. So if Jeffrey would have saved that for the last round, mm -hmm. he could have went in, maybe beat Matt in that workout where Matt finished 1254, Jeffrey finished in 1256. Yes. It was that tight. I know. But I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that, that really is the difference. I know that sounds silly and it's, it's repetitive that we keep saying that. Right. But, um, he pushed at the wrong time and then they interviewed, I thought this was funny too, CrossFit was like, why don't you interview the second place people on this one? Because uh, oh, we're so we kind of talking to Tia and Matt. We get a live story of Matt and Tia. And you keep right? interviewing first. Exactly. And then Jeffrey was like, I mean, I had him in round nine. And then so Nicole was like, yeah, but there are ten rounds. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, uh, I mean, it was a good push. I mean, he did really great staying kind of right. under the radar and let, let Justin be the be the rabbit. And he right. just kind of stayed right there. But to your point, should have waited for that round too 10, soon. you know? Um, and then maybe it would have been a little bit closer than it was, which right. was only two and a half seconds. Um, but I, mean, I like that. I like that event. It wasn't my it favorite was one of the weekend, but it was one of the ones that fall watch. under my spectator. Like I, th I really think all the events fall under. Yeah, and it was fun for spectators. Right, right. And yeah. uh, this is again, this is one that turned out to be more fun than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I like how the guys. Uh, did you see the guys would do like the uh, you know when you slam on the, the back brace? Yeah, it was know. awesome. That was kind of a cool thing. I wonder why the girls didn't do that if they didn't practice that or like they're less comfortable or whatever. They but like to show off. It's an ego thing. I don't yeah, know, honestly. Go. Yeah, but I mean, I, I like <laughs> do that. this. They see the cool baseball card and my bike yeah, yeah, spoke, yeah. and I <laughs> yeah, I get that. But I mean, I. I don't know if it was any faster. It looks kind of cool, but then uh, you also have to take an effect like, was the grass slicker since the girls had already gone? Yeah, you know, know, little stuff like yeah. that is stuff that like probably doesn't matter a whole bunch, but it probably could like affect like the decision to go ahead and slide the tire around the corner right. or the pillar. What are those called for the record? I They're the Trek tire. bikes. I don't remember no, the model. The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the pylons. Is it the, the pylons? The, the big like um, red. Yeah. 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 Well, see, this is this is a conversation. <laughs> I think Zach Stormer goes, yeah, pylons, and I'm like. I mean, aren't the pylons a little tiny in the end zone? I was like, I said pillar. That's not right. But um, anyway, I don't know what they're called. But pylons? Pillar did, pylons. Did anybody else look up the Trek bike prices after that? Well, I did. Mountain bikes are silly. These were, the ones they were using were around $900. Oh, that's and not too bad. Well, like, I thought, man, I kind of want one of those. No, I don't. <laughs> nope, never mind. Man, uh, there, are, there are mountain bikes that go for like ten and $15,000. Yeah, that's I'm crazy. Like, I can get that a car. Is insane. Yeah, that's an actual vehicle. Yeah, yeah. I can get a car from nine hundred. Just give me, give me some time. You <laughs> right. Know? Um, but um, that's not what fitness is about. No, we need, we need to it's ride not. bicycles to prove how fit we are. How are people going to know? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Um, so after the bike, we're moving to so uh, and the last, <laughs> the last workout of the day for day two. Happy Star. Anything but happy. Um, there was the four rounds, mm -hmm. two to 300 meter hill run. We're running oh, again, we're yes. back on that hill. And then the four rounds doing something a little different. Usually when we see workouts that ascend in reps, we go down in weight or vice versa. No, this is going to ascend in reps and weight. You are just going to hate just one the more longer this workout yes, goes. Yes. Yeah, Dave Castro is a prick. Mm -hmm. um, great. Like this is a, this is a, this is a good wad though. Like, this would be one. It was one of my favorites to watch. Yeah. I and mean, I really, I really thought it was great. You could see the athletes the whole time. Yeah. And you can kind of see what, what what they're doing. The oh yeah, they're going to go across the hill. That means the the first athlete's going to be ahead at the beginning, and right. the last one they're going to have a disadvantage. I like how it went, and the bar was kind of cool too. I liked the bar. It was a thirty inch bar. Mm -hmm. Um, the my one thing about the hill being. Because obviously when we see running events, historically, it's usually in like a loop. So if you start closer to the entrance, you're further from the exit. So it's fair that way. So whenever they started at going the same way, I thought, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Only because who has the advantage first has the advantage fresh. Mm -hmm. But then they also have the disadvantage more tired, where some people have the disadvantage fresh. Yeah. So I don't... 
I'm not going to say it's an uneven test of fitness. Because okay. I, I don't think it necessarily is. Yeah. It's just a little harder to base because I don't know. It's it's close enough that they all had the same test. Yeah. But it could be a little different for each and every Well, one. especially when you talk about Brooke. Brooke came out on a mission. Yes, and that mission did not wasn't quite successful. Not until she got to the fourth round where she was exhausted yep. and had the longest route yep. and then they were able to catch up to her there. And that was one of the most heartbreaking of the weekend because she went from first for 80% of this workout right. to finishing fourth. fourth. And so going over the rep scheme for the workout, 5, 7, 9, 11, burpees and thrusters, combination of depth, uh, women's <laughs> weight starts at 95, then it goes to 105, 110, 115. Man, 135, 145, 155, 165. Um, so, yeah, like you said, starts off strong. Mm -hmm. It was did not work out, though. Well, you uh, could feel her, though. You could feel she was on a mission. Yeah, like, absolutely. I'm going to go after it. And it wasn't just because she was the on that first lane. Like, she beat everyone handily back to it and then beat everyone all the way to that fourth turn and really didn't get past until that last pillar pylon but i'm pretty sure right. what really I've been got to her to <laughs> what really got her was in those uh, set of 11 thrusters i think she broke twice well she and did, she is, burpees were way faster than hers yeah oh yeah that that, that woman's a machine like, if she's not cast in the next terminator movie as the terminator <laughs> truth it's not right <laughs> but like this workout like there's so many factors to it and i and, and being able to it's just tough and it, I guess it, it gives more light onto Tia. She's behind for those first three and a half, but stays calm, mm -hmm. stays doing her thing. And then she knows that her short run is coming soon and she'll get her. And there's just, at that point, nothing that Brooke can do. And then now this is a testament to the uphill climb that everyone's had facing Tia the whole weekend that um, we get there and like, you're not tired? We're all tired? Why are you still going? And then, you know, she kind of walks away with yeah, it. Yeah, finished it. I yeah. feel like that's a great explanation, though, of Tia and Matt's performance over the entire weekend. Like, they may, they, on a lot of the workouts, they would start behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they always, they, it was like they had a, better i guess or a higher level of endurance than the other ones did oh, absolutely. and so they could stick with these workouts even though they were super duper hard like they could stick with them longer even knowing that they were in these further behind positions they could mm -hmm. stick with it longer and then push through at the end yeah and I where the other uh, the, uh, excuse me the other athletes couldn't like come up with that energy at the end yeah it's always easier to game plan when you're in the front and yeah. the confidence that they have with being four and th three and four time champs at this point three and four time champs that they're just like, I've been here. Right. I know what's gonna go on. You're gonna blow up, you're gonna lose your grip, your legs are gonna stop, and I'm gonna keep on rolling. And like that's it's more there's no more evident than in this one that they can just be like, I'm fine. I'll be fine. I'll be able to reach when I'll be able to reach for in the tank. I got more. You're gonna reach for it and be like right. I don't got that. Where, where's it at? Where's I, it thought, at I brought know? more from home with yeah, me. I, I know, thought. yeah, and they lost. So, but um, like, I think that goes into their training, um, not just theirs, obviously, but the, everybody else on the field. Because I think we are almost at a point, if we aren't already mentally, where a lot of these athletes are training for a second. They're not training to win anymore because Matt and Tia are so far ahead. But because of that, I think, and I want to talk about this more when we get to the podium conversation. That's why our podiums are so different every year, except for first. Mm -hmm. So we'll get more to that later. Yeah. Going over the uh, the top five finishes for Happy Star. Uh, Tia at 842. Carrie at 917. Good second place finish for her after being mostly mid-pack all day for this one. And that's a 30 second in between first yeah. and second. Yeah. 30 second in... Oh, it's a much better race than the guys. I can't wait to go over those times. Yes. Uh, Katrin, 932. Brooke, 1005. And Haley, 1018, which makes sense those heavyweights kind of buried her a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Um, to only be 30, 13 seconds behind Brooke, I think that was a really good score for her. Then we go to Matt. So from first to fifth, there is only a 41 second difference. I love that. Yeah. I that's, love races that's like good, that. Yeah, yeah, that's how it should be. I mean, yeah. we have five of the fittest guys and fittest girls. It should be less than a minute on yeah. one of these. This is a less than 10 minute workout. 
right? It should be pretty close. So Matt at 818, Samuel Quant at 833, Jeffrey Adler at 840, Noah Olson at 854, and Justin Medeiros at 859. And this is where, on this day, you see Medeiros starting to fall off a and little Sam bit. And Sam taking those steps toward, right? Exactly. And Sam was so good at staying middle. That's mm-hmm. all it was, is being consistent. Not a lot of last place finishes, mm-hmm. but a solid amount of third. But this is how second. Rich Froning made his living. Exactly. You know, there was a year that he only won like the last two events of the entire CrossFit Games, and he won them. Absolutely. Because he was good at everything. You stay in the top 10 when them, there's right? 40 people. Yeah. That's a big deal, because everybody else, they might have like a couple finish uh, wins, mm-hmm. but then they might have a finish when they're in 22nd place. Yeah, you can't have those. You can't have those super bottom ones. A bunch, you know. Everyone had a last place finish, I think, obviously, except for the top two, top, you know, winners. No, no, no. Tina but had one. Did like you know, she did. Yeah, right. handstands. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if Matt had had no. one that low. Matt did um, not. Yeah, because he doubled the second place score. Right. How? Let me just talk about that. <laughs> when when you're go when you're leaving day two, and you're 440, and he's double more than double that. Right. What do you do? How what do you we How do you go back? I did. I, I think we, we commented and said they're gonna have to Tanya Harding him if, yeah. if they want to. And he was still. And he would still win. Right. Right. If he still got the zeros for uh, showing no effort in the uh, yeah. in the stuff because he broke his leg. He was as still long win. as they gave like as long as he did it, went out there and did the minimum work requirement, which I think he would still figure out how to do. He would. He yeah. would still win. <clears throat> yeah. So that concludes all of day two. So in part three, we'll go over day three and the podium. Here we go. Can't wait. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.